So what are the considerations that we take in choosing an antibiotic to treat um, pneumonia? So um, when we has when we think that the causative agent is a bacteria or a bacterium, then then of course we will have to consider which antibiotic do we choose in order to treat the condition. So this will of course depend on the clinical findings, what's from the history, what's from the physical examination findings, and then um, what comes back from the lab, and also radiographic findings on the chest x-ray, CT scan, etc. So, and also we will have to look at the age. The age of the patient is the patient an elderly patient or is he a young and fit patient? And also at the local epidemiology of respiratory pathogens, so which will vary from center to center, and the sensitivity of the pathogens to antimicrobial agents and also emergence of antimicrobial resistance in a particular setting. And we also have to look at the severity of the pneumonia. Is it just a mild pneumonia? Is it moderate? Is it severe? A severe kind of pneumonia. So that will also influence us in choosing which antibiotics um, to give to the patient and also, of course, last but not least, the, the cost of the antibiotic, which is of paramount importance, especially during our during this time where we have a lot of um, financial constraints put upon us by the by the public. Okay, and because of the lack of fund, funding, etc., we will have to really take this into consideration before um, choosing or prescribing an antibiotic for a patient whether it's in the ward or in the outpatient setting. So um, so don't forget that um, viruses contribute to about 15% of pneumonia cases. So we also might want to um, to institute or give supportive therapy to the patients which will include fluid therapy if the patient is dehydrated or if the patient is not being able to tolerate orally well so you put an IV line and then you will, you will institute um, appropriate fluid therapy for the patient and then oxygen therapy so you might want to give a SFRM oxygen or a or various forms of oxygen therapy, depending on the situation, you might have to intubate the patient, for example, sometimes if the condition is severe. And then also, you might sometimes want to give you know, antitussives due to the fact that um, they might have problems with the cough. So they might be coughing, so you know, it's a problem for them, it's annoying to them, so you might want to give them an antitussive. So these are some of the commonly used antibiotics and their dosages. You know, and these are mainly this is taken from the Malaysian um, clinical practice guideline for treating pneumonia in pediatric cases. So this is mainly pediatrics, but of course it's, it can be, can give you some idea as to roughly what um, an adult will also receive. So IV antibiotics. So we have amoxicillin clavulinate and then ampicillin sulbactam, which is the brand, the famous brand name is, um, for this is Unicin, and this one is um, augmenting, and then we have ampicillin, and then C penicillin, cefuroxime, cefotexime, cloxacillin, cotramoxazole, 
erythromycin, which is a macrolide, and then you have the that's for IV. These are some of the commonly given IV antibiotics, and then you have the full antibiotics, azithromycin, the the macrolide, and then augmentin, which is um oxymetabolinate, and then ciproxin, aflosporin, then the cotramatazone again, oxacillin, then another another form of um another form of um what do you call it macrolide erythromycin and then penicillin V another penicillin so these are some of the forms of antibiotics that are commonly used in the wards for for pediatrics so another example of a case of pneumonia a 25 year old male Yeah, this is this is actually the same as I uh, showed you before, but with more details added to it. So a 25 year old man presents to the emergency room or emergency department with shortness of breath, okay. dyspnea, and one week ago he developed influenza, and has become more short of breath and fatigued in the last 12 24 hours. So so he has developed the flu. So, and I think most of you will probably know that the flu is more severe than the cold. The cold is usually preceded by just runny nose, but the flu you have so throat, and then you will have um fever, right? probably a higher fever than the common cold. And then you might develop um muscle aches, okay? You have body aching all over. So that's the flu. So you develop that, and then has become more short of breath and fatigue in the last 10 to 24 hours. So his temperature was raised, okay, 38.5, and then saturations is a bit low, but okay, 1.2 liters of oxygen, and then the blood pressure was 100 over 60, and heart rate 120 over per minute. And the chest X-ray shows patchy consolidation, which we, um, of course, usually associate with pneumonia. So which antibiotic therapy should you select for this man? So should you just give amoxicillin? Or yes, amoxicillin and fluoxacillin. Okay. Or is it amoxicillin and gentamicin? Or is it amoxicillin and rifampicin or fluoxacillin? So which one do you choose? So we know that this young chap Okay, he has shortness of breath, so it's a bit severe. Okay, and then temperature is high. Okay, yes. oxygen saturation is not so great. Okay, percent. So, and we have a um, positive finding on chest x ray. So, do you think we should just give him a oxygen? Why? Or do you need to combine a oxygen with a block, cystilin? Or do you need to give something that also covers the gram negative moxicillin and gentamicin? Or do you think you need to cover something more, more uncommon but more sinister, more, more potentially dangerous or more difficult to treat, such as, uh, amoxicillin? Okay, give me a Or you just give the clock cystilin. Which one do you choose? And why? What is the what is the reasoning behind that? So the explanation for the, the answer patients who present with pneumonia after influenza or measles are at risk of staph pneumonia. So look for cavitation on chest X-ray. Okay, this is um this is for the clinical students. If you're a, a, a non-clinical student, a pre-clinical student, then you don't have to worry about this. Okay, so the British um, Thoracic Society guidelines state that amoxicillin should be the first line therapy for all pneumonia. Okay, with the addition of fluoxacillin if there is a risk of it being staphylococcal. Okay. 
So in gentamicin may be indicated in severe hospital acquired pneumonia and rifampicin in severe atypical infections. Okay, so if it's severe gentamicin in severe hospital acquired pneumonia sometimes may be indicated in the rifampicin in severe atypical infections. For example, Legionella. So the, the answer given for this question was um, um, it's com to combine amoxicillin with fluoxacillin. Uh, but um, for preclinical students, don't worry too much about this detail. I'm just trying to show you how um, clinicians might um, might um, give an antibiotic by giving some due considerations to some factors that are involved or some factors that are present in the patient, some attributes that are present in the patient. Okay. Okay, another case is um, a 25 year old presented with um, the ED with cough, shortness of breath, and headache. Okay. He had been treated by his GP with moxicillin, GP general practitioner with moxicillin, but did not improve. He had recently been on holiday in Spain. On examination, he had bilateral track holes. So, and his liver enzymes were deranged. So, this is just to show a case of pneumonia. So in this case, um, it's most probably due to Legionella pneumophila, which is common in, in certain hotels, old hotels. So if someone has been on holiday, sometimes that it's a clue to that. You know, the patient is, uh, is, is getting, um, is having Legionella pneumophila, and this will respond to macrolides, erythromycin, azithromycin, and then quinolones. And, and also tetracyclines. And in general note is one should be careful to cover atypical pneumonia when choosing antibiotics and mortality can be high especially in the immunocompromised. So always be aware of um, the history of the patient and be aware of the fact that um, the patient might not present with a typical pneumonia but um, patient has come with atypical pneumonia which are caused by one of these organisms that you mentioned. Um, yeah, one of these, maybe chlamydia, chlamydia trachomatis, mycobacterium, tuberculosis, legionella, mycoplasma, mycoplasma pneumonia, and cella. So be aware of the, the, the possibility that the patient did not come with this um, typical presentation of pneumonia with this um, common pathogens, but instead of the common ones such as strep pneumonia and hemophilus, the, the, so they might come with one of these atypical ones, okay, and all the other bacteria. So in this case, if you suspect that it's due to an atypical um, bacteria, so so you should not wait for the results of the culture or urinary antigens to, before starting uh, and the antibiotic that is um, suitable for that condition.